a surety for thy friend. If thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of your mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go. Humble thyself and make sure thy friend. Give not sleep to him, to thy eyes, nor slumber to thy eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roar from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer, and gathered her food in the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually, he sows discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things that the Lord hates, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devised wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies, and he that sows discord among brethren. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart, and tie them about your neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakes, it shall talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instructions are the way of life, to keep thee from the evil women, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lost not after her beauty in your heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a warish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committed adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He that does it destroys his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get. And his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he rest content. Though thou gives many gifts. Father we thank you and we bless you and we glorify your holy name. 
Lord, thank you, Lord, for such a wonderful day that you have given to us, Lord. We are declaring, Heavenly Father, is rejoicing and celebration that is our portion. Lord, we thank you for this first Sunday, Lord, of this sixth month, Lord, of this year 2021, Jehovah. We are declaring, Lord, it is our season, Heavenly Father, our season of the miraculous. It is our set time, Lord. Lord, the set time of your favor being made manifest in our lives of life, of health, of healing, being a portion. Jehovah, we declare it and we decree it and we receive it with gratitude and with hearts of gratitude, Jehovah. We bow before your presence, Lord, and we declare and decree, Lord, that we will live and we will not die and we will continuously celebrate your faithfulness. Lord, not just the sixth month, Lord, but throughout all the months of the year, Lord, and throughout all the years, Lord, you that Jesus tarries. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for doing beyond our imaginations, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have declared that we have hearing ears, Lord, and we have seen eyes. And we hear what you are saying, Jehovah. And we see what you are saying to us, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we indeed enjoy your goodness. Lord, we remain examples of believers. Lord, and we remain witnesses of your goodness in this land of the living. Thank you for doing it, Heavenly Father. Be exalted. In Jesus' name we have declared. Amen. Amen.
little louder. Sing a 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 little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Hallelujah, Lord, we praise you this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, we praise you this morning. There is joy in the Lord. There is love in his spirit. There is hope in the knowledge of him.
to us and the world can't take it away. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy in our lives, oh God. That we're covered with your mercy, oh God.
mistakes God turned into miracles my tears he turned into joy my past was forgiven a new name was written when mercy See you. 
mistakes. Amen, all of them. God took them and turned them into miracles. All my sorrows and tears, he turned, turned them all into joy. My past was forgiven, a new name, everybody say a new name, new name was written, when mercy God is mercy. He wrote our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving kindness, for your grace that is more than sufficient for us. We thank you, O oh Lord, for loving us so much that you sent your son who humbled himself, became man, came and dwelt amongst us, just to show us how much he loved us. Mighty Lord, we thank you, O Lord, that he brought upon his back stripes that took away every pain, stripes that took away every disease, stripes that took away every calamity that the enemy would try to put upon us. He brought it upon his back so that we can walk free from them all. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We thank you, O Lord, that he went to the cross of Calvary, where he shed his blood, paying the ultimate price that we could not pay, to reconcile us back unto you, so that we will be justified, so that we can be called sons of God. As we commemorate that which he did for us, Cause us, O Lord, to look up, to look forward to his soon return. For we know that he's coming back again. Heavenly Father, as we commemorate your love, let that love that you have shed abroad in our hearts flow, reaching out to one another, that men will see us and see the goodness of the Lord in our, in our lives and come and join us to fellowship you. Thank you, Lord, for doing it. Take all the glory, Lord. 
in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today, we commemorate what Jesus Christ did for us to provide our redemption, to remove our disease and pain, providing health and soundness for our physical bodies, to remove our guilt and condemnation, providing forgiveness for our sins, and right standing before God. We participate in this act of remembrance, with reverence, with joy, and with faith. The Lord Jesus gave us two emblems or symbols to use in remembering what he did for us. The bread to represent his body, which was broken for us. The wine to represent his blood which was shed for us. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 28, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This too, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 16, that the cup of blessing which we bless is in the communion, the fellowship, and the sharing of the blood of Christ, the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? As we remember the sac sacrifice of Christ, we likewise remember that we represent his body in the world today. This communion reminds us of our identity, church of Jesus Christ, in the world today. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 17, it tells us, for we, for we being many, are one bread and one body. For we all partake of that one bread. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Now, you are the body of Christ and members individually. Shall we stand? The bread which we'll eat together represents Christ's body, which was broken for us, that we might become whole in him. In his suffering, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, that he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. In Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, it tells us, certainly he has borne our sicknesses and carried away our pains. And by his stripes, by his suffering, we are healed. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 This is an accomplished deal. Over 2,000 years ago, done once and for all. Our part is to believe. Hold on to the word. And Satan has no right, absolutely no right, to do otherwise. And must flee from our body in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Today we are going to identify with Christ's body as we lift up our bread and confess together. I hold this bread before you, Lord, as a reminder of your body, which was broken for me. I thank you for bearing all of my diseases and pain. I number myself among the healed. My body is the tabernacle of God, not the house of disease. As I eat this bread in faith, I remember you. And by your suffering, I am healed today. Let's eat together. The cup which we we'll drink together represents Christ's blood, which was shed for our sins. 
Jesus said at the last supper in Matthew chapter 26, verse 28, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many, for the remission of sins. Apostle John tells us in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. The new covenant is one of relationship with God and with others in the body of Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 21 through 22, I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them. Amen? Let's hold up our cup as we confess together. I hold this cup of wine before you, Lord, as a reminder of your blood, which was shed for me. Thank you for paying the price for all my sins. You bore my guilt and shame. I now have dignity. I number myself among the righteous. I am redeemed. As I drink this cup in faith, I remember you. By your blood, I am clean today. Let's drink together. Let's raise up our right hand as we confess together. Thank you, Jesus. I do remember you. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you that I'm in fellowship with you. Thank you that I'm one with my brothers and sisters. Thank you for your life that is in us. In Jesus' name, amen. I will bless you, Lord, and give you glory like us to turn to Malachi chapter 3. We're going to read verse 10 through 12. Malachi 3, 10 to 12. It is on the board. Let's read together. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast out fruit before the time. In the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a gladsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Amen? It says all nations will call you blessed. All nations. Not just your town. Not just your city. Not just your own country. But all nations. Imagine that. Because the noise will be heard all around. And it will be very evident. People will see you and know that you are blessed. Amen? 
You don't need to broadcast it. You don't need to advertise it. It will be generally known. Why? Because it's true. And it is true because you obeyed. Amen? You obeyed one commandment. To do what? To bring ye all. Not some. All. The tithe. Tithe is one-tenth. One-twenty is not tithe. That's offering. Bring ye all. The truth is that everything belongs to God. He doesn't need our money. He just wants to bless us more. But before he can bless you, he wants to know that you are a faithful servant. That you can handle more. And the way you show that is by giving of your tithe. See, giving of our tithe requires discipline. And when you have that kind of discipline, you can apply it in all areas of life. It requires prioritization. Knowing what is first and doing that first. Knowing what is important. And putting them first. And the most important is to put God first. Invite God into your affairs. Anything you put in his hands, he will multiply. Well, most importantly, giving of your tithe is a demonstration of your faith that you really believe his word. It says, prove me now in this. Have you proved God and gone lacking? No way. When we bring up our tithes, he promises to open the windows of heaven. And pour us out a blessing and empowerment that will change our lives, change our family, change our society. Because it will be overflowing. We will have more than enough that will become a blessing to those around us. And if that's all that he did, it's more than sufficient. But he goes on to say that he will fight our battle for us. He will fight our battle for us. Do you want God to fight your battle? You know he never loses. He wins even before it started. All by being obedient to his commandment. He wants to bless us. Do you want to be blessed? Do you want to be blessed? Well, if you do, stand with your tithe and your offering as we profess the offering confession of faith together. Heavenly Father, we profess this day unto you that we have come into the inheritance which you swore to give us. We are in the land which you have provided for us in Jesus Christ the kingdom of almighty God. We were sinners serving Satan. He was our God. But we called upon the name of Jesus and you heard our cry and delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of your dear son. Jesus, as our Lord and high priest, we bring the first fruits of our income to you that you may worship the Lord our God with them. Father, we rejoice in all the good which you have given to us in our household. We have heard your voice and have done according to all that you have commanded us. Now, Father, as you look down from your holy habitation from heaven to bless us as you said in your word, we believe that we now receive 
those blessings according to your word. This is our confession of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. 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 Let us sing and praise the Lord. Let us sing and praise the Lord. Let us sing and praise the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. 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 want to dismiss our young people to go to their own classes. I believe they're already gone. Amen. You know that song, Mercy Rewrote My Life. Oh my God. How many of you understood that song? You know, I was here just meditating on the mercy of God. And I... I I was thinking about the blind men that came to Jesus. Um, one of them in, in the book of Luke chapter 18. You don't have to turn to it. But there was something so special that that man did. He began to ask for mercy. In other words... He said, have mercy on me. That's what he said to Jesus, right? Under the old covenant, he knew it has to be mercy because they attached sicknesses to something the family did or some curse or something. So he began to ask for mercy and Jesus called for him to be brought have you ever thought of some people that have gone through some challenges? And you know you've been through the same challenge, but you came out okay. And you probably will know what caused the challenge, but you are okay. And you know of somebody else that probably went through lighter problems and did not come out okay. How many of you understand what I'm saying? This song humbles me because we tend to judge when it's somebody else. Not realizing it's only the grace. Mercy is a subset of grace. Thank you. It's only the grace of God that you and I are where we are today. So, I ask you to understand when you see me worshiping the Lord and I'm booing. I couldn't just help it. 
and I still don't want to help you because I know it's only mercy. I will give you a drastic example of what God ministered to me because I, I have tangible examples to this. Some people had I mean, um, abortions when they were young and they didn't know better. But they are never able to have any more child. How many of you know what I'm saying? And then we have people that had abortions and they are having more children and more children. And some of you, we are probably, we can identify with this. But it's not because you did somebody a favor that made you now to be able to have a child. That's just one example. And there are people that have challenges with their children. And the enemy wants to play games in your mind is because you did this or you didn't do this. And then there are others that did worse things. And their kids are fine. How many of you understand what I'm saying? You know it's only because of the grace of God. So this song means a lot to me. I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you on some mistakes that you know has not gone in front to hunt you but you know it's only because of the grace of God that those mistakes have been turned around into miracles can you sing that part and please join him please two of you three of you that are left here please this means a lot to me this is the word of god it's romans 8 28 in case you are not familiar with what this song is it's romans 8 28 it's only the grace of god the mercy of god that we are enjoying the blessings of god amen hallelujah my mistakes God turned into miracles my tears he turned into joy my past was forgiven a new name was written
It's only your mercy, your grace that we wrote our lives. And now we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's your mercy. That's why you said we can come boldly to the throne of your God and obtain mercy and find grace in times of need. Just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the inheritance, the benefits that you have given to us by the reason of what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. And now we have the privilege and the opportunity to come boldly to your throne and receive your mercy and find your grace every given moment. We say thank you. We say thank you that we are victorious 24-7 because of your mercy, your grace. We thank you for the voice of the blood of Jesus still speaking on our behalf. Speaking forgiveness. That we are forgiven. We thank you for the power in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost in us say thank you Holy Spirit you're so welcome continue to acknowledge Jesus and him alone in our lives in this church in our homes in our families in our cities in our nations we covet earnestly that your gifts will continue to operate in our lives especially the working of miracles. Lord, we have no one else to go to. We have nowhere else to go to except to come to you. Oh, Lord, that's why we are rejoicing for your mercy. We know we can come to you and obtain good things. And, Lord, we are saying thank you for the working of the miracles, the gifts of healing, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning our spirits, and your prophetic utterance in this place this day. We vow to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, everyone shout aloud, amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Thank you so much, Reverend Frank. Appreciate you all. Mm. Were you blessed? I, I just had to hold myself on Sunday, so we will have, I will have opportunity to continue with the word that song you know um, Reverend Ken I appreciate that because I have been asking him to do that song for some time now and uh, last Saturday the practice and I got home I was still in that worship song so don't be surprised if you go home and it's ringing in your <laughs> If you don't know very well, just say mercy, mercy, mercy. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so powerful. That is Jesus, that song. Now, I want us to continue in what the Lord has been doing, and uh, we're going to tie it into the, uh, into the theme that God has given to us for this month, June, and moving forward. Uh, today is going to be victorious living with tangible breakthroughs. I, I, I think my, I, I believe, you know, the Lord is so amazing. I believe my being an engineer ties in a lot to my expectation for the word of God to work for us. You know, engineering, the difference with being an engineer and uh, loving math and science is that engineering, you have to apply what you know in math and science. 
And then when you apply it, it has to be tangible. Like, you know, building the spacecraft is tangible. But it's all based on math. So I'm always looking to see tangible manifestations of God because of the word that we are hearing. You know, I, I, I can't even be religious even if I try <laughs> because I can't. I want to see the application of what I'm reading, I'm studying, I am hearing the word. I want to see that work in my life. Somebody hearing me? I want to see the application. Okay? So victorious living is the application of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know what is so good? What is so good is that he became our example. He walked the earth. And for three and a half years, he had disciples, and he wanted to show us how this works. And I'm so glad that he became our example. So when we talk about victorious living with tangible breakthroughs, I want you to begin to believe God for tangible breakthroughs beginning in our lives. Yeah, let's not be thinking about somebody else you think they need to change, but let's begin with our lives, okay? So God has provided victory for us. In every challenge we're going through today, he's already provided the victory. Amen. Hmm? Whatever it is. And you know why? Because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's finished. When he was on that cross, he said it's finished. So whatever challenge and circumstances we're going through today, let's believe that we are already on the victory lane and we will remain in victory lane. Amen. You know, one of the things that I, I have to deal with a lot in the engineering world, you know, when, when we have uh, situations about failures of anything that we have built, they want you to put in the likelihood that it's not going to happen again. <laughs> How many of you, somebody's laughing already. And uh, I don't like that, you know why? I want to know that it will never happen again. So even if you get to the place that you have the likelihood of 99.9999999 that it will not happen again, I don't want the 99 point. I don't care how many nines. I want to know 100% it will never happen. Amen. Am I alone? Amen. Okay. Well, I'm here to tell you, the word of God is 100% likelihood. Amen. That his word is yea and amen, and if he said it, it is guaranteed. <laughs> you, you see how I, my thinking goes. Yeah, that's me. So I, I, I want you to join me. How many of you believe that God's word is true? Yeah. And so if I am getting, if anyone, let's, let's remove us. If anyone is saying, yeah, I know he said this, but I have only seen 60%. Somebody said that's not my portion. That's right. So we need to find out how can I get it to 100? Amen. Huh? Amen. How can I get it to 100? Well, today, that's where we are going today. Amen. How to get it to 100. Because we know that God's word is yea and amen. And I'll, I'll begin with Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55 verse 11. It says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. Is that in your Bible? Amen. But it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. How I many of you believe that? Amen. So when God's word is spoken by me, by you, by anyone that believes in him, when it goes forth, God is glorified and you and I are helped. You and I are delivered. 
you and I are healed. You and I are transformed by that God's word that are spoken by us. How many of you believe that? Shout amen. amen. It will never return to him void. Hmm? So every time we come and hear the word of God and lean into the Rema word. Everyone say Rema word. Rema word. The Rema word is critical because some word will go forth on your head and bounce back and forth, right? I mean, if you have been there, you know what I'm saying. But you want the timely word in season, the Rema word. Is a timely word when your no one knows beyond every shadow of doubt that God said he sent his word and his word healed us. That God said Jesus Christ became poor so that I will be rich. That God said our children are for signs and wonders. That God said, no weapon formed against me will ever prosper. When you know that you know that you know, that is when that word is Rema word. Amen. That is from God's throne room for you. And that's when you can possess more and more of your promised land. Did somebody get that? Yes. You know what the Lord is saying to you and I today? The Lord is saying to us, there remains yet very much land yes. to be possessed. That's Joshua 13.1. The Lord is saying there remains more and more of your promised land. There's still more that he wants to give to you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is saying there are areas in our lives where we are not possessing all that he has for us. Thank you, Lord. And he wants us to possess them. Even right now, we may not know all those areas, but he will reveal them to us every day. You know, Ephesians 1, 3. Let's, let's read that. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. I want to show you something. We are going to begin to expect to possess all our land. Amen. Not some. All. And I want to show you today some of the areas or things that have caused us not to possess all. And we are going to begin to possess all. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Let's read together. It says what? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Ah, we have been blessed with how many? Every spiritual blessing, but where are they? In, in the heavenly places. Underline that phrase. We're going somewhere. We are blessed where? And where is that? In the heavenly places. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me see if someone is going to scream. Now, but the word of God tells us also that in the same heavenly places that there is great spiritual warfare going on. Mm -hmm. Where do we find that? Ephesians 6, verse 12. And you know the spiritual warfare going on is to hinder us from possessing all that is ours. 
possessing all our blood but blessing. But you've got to know that. Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle. But we wrestle against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, where? In the heavenly places. The same place that we just read in Ephesians 1. Every spiritual blessing is where? In the heavenly places. And the spiritual warfare is going on where? In the heavenly places. You've got to know that. So the enemy does not want any believer possessing your possession. Remember, we've talked about this. We look at what God did with the people in the Old Testament, Old Covenant, and we use what happened there as an example for our lessons, for counsel, for us be, to be able to partake and draw from. And we are going to do that also today. But before we go further, I want us to understand the kind of fight that we are fighting. The spiritual warfare, we are not fighting flesh and blood. We already read it in Ephesians 6, 12. We are not fight, fighting our in-laws. Your mother-in-law is not the problem. Your father-in-law is not the problem. Your sister is not the problem. People in the church, we are not problem to one another. Now you may say, well, but the devil uses them. But it's a spirit. Now, I want you to know what kind of fight we are supposed to put up with. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. We need to clarify that. It says, fight. Fight what? The good. I want to hear the word good. Fight what? The good fight of faith. Why is it good? Because we already won. Did we win by our strength? No. We won by the reason of what Christ did where? On the cross of Calvary. Okay? It's a fight. The good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. To which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So our fight is a fight of faith. We don't fight for victory. Hear me, church? We don't fight for victory. We fight from the victory. Jesus Christ has already won for us. Very important. Don't lose your ground. We are already in the victory lane. We're not going to step out of it. Amen? Very important. So we are going to talk about today possessing the victory that God has already given to us, but especially possessing the victory in our flesh. Possessing the victory in our flesh. You know, when the Bible tells us cast down imagination, that's a really great reason for us to pay attention to the mind. Because that's where the enemy plays games. When challenges come, don't forget that you have victory already. And it's in the mind. You have to remind yourself, 
I have the victory. I am more than a conqueror. I have the victory. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God has provided me with the victory. I am redeemed. How many of you are redeemed? Amen. We are. So I want us to look at two sides of redemption. Let's begin with the redemption by the blood. And I want to go to the story in Old Covenant. Let's draw from there. You remember, and I, I don't want to read a lot of scriptures because of time. Remember when the children of Israel were in Egypt, and when God told them to kill a lamb, that was a shadow of the true lamb of God, that is Jesus. And he told them, take the blood of the lamb and put on your doppels and eat the lamb. Roast the lamb. Don't boil it, roast it. Again, that was a shadow of the type of death Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. He was roasted. He was beaten up. People could not recognize him. He was roasted. And so he gave them the instruction because the spirit of death was going to pass by in every house in Egypt. Every home. The only difference will be when the spirit of destruction sees the blood. Amen. So blood has eyes. Did you guys get that? Uh-huh. So when the spirit of destruction sees the blood, the blood sees the destruction too. And says, you better pass by. This place is not yours. I'm here. Oh, somebody shout, the blood of Jesus is speaking for me. And the destruction will pass by. So what happened? All the children of Israel in Egypt, we are protected from the destroyer because of the lamb's blood on their doorposts and on the lintel. Despite all all their sins. I want to stress on that. Every home had somebody that committed some sin before they went to bed. But there was no sin question. All that mattered was what? The blood. The blood. And so none of them were destroyed. Let's, let's read First John chapter 1. Verse 7, I want to paraphrase that. It says, the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed us from how many sins? Every sin. And so we can say today that through his blood, we are protected. Talking about the redemption by the blood of Jesus. Through his blood... We and our family, everyone in our boat, they are protected. Through his blood, we are blessed. Through the blood of Jesus, we are healed. Through the blood of Jesus, we receive all the blessings of God. So we know that the foundation of our redemption is the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen. amen. It's not our works. It's not because what we have done or what we haven't done. It's because of what Jesus Christ did for us by shedding his own blood. So every day when we wake up, we remind ourselves that indeed we are blessed. Indeed, we are protected from COVID-19 effects. Amen. You know, are you guys hearing all kinds of stories about, oh, maybe the vaccine doesn't really uh, protect and you can't even say that because you took vaccine that There'll be no more whatever. How many, how many of you have been hearing all kinds of stories? Okay. 
So we know that by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are protected. Amen. That is our trust in the Lord. Now, so that's the redemption we have by the blood. Now, write this down. Number two, the redemption by the power of the Holy Spirit. Going back to 1 Corinthians 10. I want us to read that scripture. It's very important that we understand what we are doing. 1 Corinthians 10, 11, and I'm going to paraphrase. All things that happen to the Old Testament folks, they are types. And they are for our example. So for us, we are drawing from what happened to the people of God in the Old Testament. Remember going back to what happened to them in Egypt? They left Egypt, protected, healed. And we know the Bible tells us in Psalm 105, 37, none was feeble in their midst. None. So we know even the 100-year-old, the 120-year-old, the 1-year-old, the 2-year-old, they all were able to walk through those land in the wilderness. None was feeble. None of them. Why? Because of the covenant that they received. When that blood was put on their doorposts and the lintel, they received that protection. Now, so when we talk about the redemption by the power of the Holy Spirit, there was a time they got to a place where there was the Red Sea. And they turned around, they turned back, and they saw the Egyptian army. Remember, they left healthy. No problem. But now they were faced with the Red Sea in their face and the army at the back. They had to do something. Moses called upon the name of the Lord and the Lord said to him, I'm paraphrasing, everything you need is in you. Amen. The Lord is saying the same to you and I today. Amen. How many of you know that we, the believers, we are the containers of the Holy Ghost. First John 4, 4 says, the greater one is in us. Greater is he that's in you and in me than he that's in the world. The Holy Ghost. And so the Lord told Moses, everything you need, you have. He said, I do. He said, yeah, you have the power. I have anointed you, I have called you out to be the one to deliver this one point, over one point million people. You have the power to do that. I have the power. Yeah. I said, matter of fact, what about the rod in your hand? What about the word I gave to you? Amen. Oh, that, yeah. So put it there and speak. Whatever you speak, you'll see it come to pass. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Somebody shout the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's what he did. He put the rod and spoke. And the Red Sea parted. And they crossed over. The power of the Holy Ghost in us. The resurrection power of the Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead dwells. In us. We are talking about victory all the way. Not just spiritually, but also in our flesh. There are many believers that have addictions. You can deliver yourself by believing. <laughs> you know, I truly believe that God has called us at a time like this for a purpose. I believe that the glory of God is going to be made manifest in the lives of believers as never before. It is very, very important that we begin to understand that we are set apart. 
So though we've been saved by the blood of Jesus, we are also new creation in Christ. And we know that the flesh still remains in us. The flesh is that part of us that will cause sins to rise up. But I want you to know that God already has a plan for us. That that flesh will not cause us not to possess our possessions. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let's go to Romans 8. I'm going to show you some few things today. So then, verse 8. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It says cannot. It didn't say may not. Cannot please God. And we want to please God. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. How many of you will say, I'm not in the flesh? flesh. Oh, you have to say to yourself, I'm not in the flesh, flesh. but in the spirit. spirit. That's right, I'm still reading the scripture. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. So we are in the Spirit. You are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. I didn't say that. I'm reading exactly verse 8 of Romans 8. (laughs) Amen. You should be very happy. The enemy will like to play games and say you are in the flesh. The Bible says you are not in the flesh. And that's what the scripture says in Galatians 5, 16. It says, I say then, walk in the spirit. Why? Because I'm in the spirit. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. This means that we are to see our flesh, the sinful tendencies, apart from us. The real you is the spirit. Oh, that amen is so like, are you really sure? Why don't you just believe it by faith? Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Do you believe it? You know, Apostle Paul went through this. He struggled with his flesh. And he he talked about it openly. He was a humble man. He talked about it openly. He said in chapter 7 of Romans, verse 18, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelling, dwelleth no good thing. He said nothing good is in it, in the flesh. But he's looking at himself. The real him is the spirit, right? For the good that I would That I will, I do not, but the evil which I will not, that I do. Ouch. Now, if I do that, I will not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He, he, He struggled with this. But you see, he was making a very, very great distinction between flesh and the real him, the spirit man. So the Bible is telling us, in our flesh dwells no good thing. And we need to know that. And when you know that, then you are going to apply what I'm going to show you today. I'm here to tell you the flesh is a symbol of self-righteousness. And that's why the flesh feels frustrated When it does bad, the flesh is always self-occupied. When you know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, 
You'll be paying attention to what Christ did for you and not paying attention to the flesh of you. Did you, did you get that? The Bible tells us, this is now one of my favorite scriptures, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. As Christ is, so am I. Right here in this world. As Christ is, so am I. Where? Right here in this world. Put on your seat belt on this scripture. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30. For we are members of his body. Pay attention. Every one of us that's born of God, we are members of whose body? Jesus Christ, right? Of his flesh and of his bones. Okay, let that settle. So we see in Ephesians 5.30 that God has also ordained Jesus' body to be made up of many members of his flesh and of his bones. I'm talking about being victorious in your flesh. <laughs> It says, we are members of whose body and whose flesh? Jesus. This means if you are facing challenges in your body, look at Jesus. Where is he? At the right hand of the Father. What do you think is going on with this? Flesh, I think, good. Well, that's who you are connected to. We are in Christ as his body. Seated together with him in the heavenly places. As he is, so I am. Because I am one with him. Did I break that down for you? How many of you are one with him? That's right. And that's why John chapter 15 verse 5. Jesus said he explained that he is the vine. He is in the vine. And we, the body, we are the branches. We are the branches. So it's not the responsibility of the branches to bear the fruit on their own. We can't. It simply does so when it is attached to a healthy vine. So you have challenges in your physical body? Well... Let's check how Jesus is doing. Look at Jesus. As he is, so I am. Where? Right here in this world. Listen. Listen. It's like taking calculus and you are telling me the equations I'm seeing in calculus is how I'm going to build spacecraft. I, I, I don't get it. I understand. This requires revelation by the Holy Ghost. For you to understand what we read in Ephesians 5.30, that we are members of his body. And he broke it down of his flesh and bones. So challenges in my physical body, let's check where that challenge is on him. Because as he is, so am I where? In this world. 
I just have to choose to believe it. So as we remain attached to the vine, all of the life in the vine will continue to do what? Flow into the branches. And I am a branch. What about you? Yeah. It's also the responsibility of the gardener to tend to the vine and the branches. It's not my responsibility. The gardener does it. And this is the picture of our Heavenly Father who tends to us. John chapter 15 verse 1. We are one with Jesus. Jesus is our true identity today. First John 4, 17. Let's go read all that together again. First John 4, 17. Everyone join me. Love has been perfected among us in this. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. We don't have to do anything to make ourselves one with Christ. In the eyes of the Father, we are already one with him. We are already seated with Christ at the right hand of, of God. That is the reality. And that's what God the Father sees. Anything that's happening to our lives right now it's only temporary. And you should expect it to buzz off. Because the reality is that we are one with Christ. And as he is, so I am. You, you tell yourself. So I am where? Right here in this world. Ephesians 1, 6b wherein he had made us accepted, charito, highly favored, in the beloved. How many of you know that he highly has favored you and I? That word accepted in Greek is charito, means highly favored. It is the same word that was used to describe Mary in Luke chapter 1, verse 28, that was chosen to be earthly mother of Jesus, she was highly favored. You and I are highly favored. Ooh, I like that. I like that. So there's no old me, poor me, sinful me. Forget that. In humility, I say forget that. Galatians 2.20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Ooh. Ooh. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live, how? By the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He gave himself for me. At the cross, Christ didn't just die for our sins, but he died as us. So as far as God is concerned, 
your old self whose flesh dwells no good thing was crucified with Christ at the cross. We have to believe it. And I know I understand it's challenging when you see yourself, you, you mess up again. Get up and remind yourself, I live by faith of the Son of God. Whenever you're feeling weak in faith, remember, you are resting in the faith of the Son of God. Who loved you and I so much and gave himself for us. So it's not about my flesh. It's about Jesus' faith. So as Jesus is, so am I where? In this world. In this world. And so the Lord has been ministering to me about the areas of different challenges. Oh my God. How many of you have felt like you know how you have a firewood um, and your fireplace? Now they have the artificial ones you burn. And it's like the firewood is, is a good example that I want to use. It's like it keeps on burning. Before you think it's, it's about to burn out, somebody just shuffle some more wood. How many of you have been feeling like the fire of the enemy has been burning without stop. And you're going, angels, angels, get this fire out. How many of you have been dealing with your dreams intensifying? I have. And then getting up to go pray. Mm -hmm. I'm praying some more in tongues. We're not dealing with flesh. The attack of the enemy has intensified, but the glory of God is going to intensify some more. Amen. I hate the devil. How many of you hate the devil? Just saying it makes me feel good. So I hate the devil. So whatever conditions that you are placed in right now, health challenges, relationship challenges, financial challenges, job challenges, whatever it is that you find yourself in right now, don't give up. Continue to behold Jesus. He is the answer. At the cross, he bore all of our sicknesses, all of our pains, every disease, every poverty, every bad relationship, every form of divorce, whatever it is, he took care of them. He said, it is finished. He meant it. And that's why we can boldly say we are on the victory lane. Amen. That we are more than conqueror. Amen. That powerful statement, as he is, so am I in this world. Amen. It's not just about our righteous standing in Christ. It includes Physical well-being. We have to believe it. As he is, so are we. As Jesus is healthy in his brain, so I am in this world. So you are in this world. As Jesus is free from high blood pressure, so I am. So you are in this world. As Jesus is free from every COVID-19 effect. So I am. So you are. In this world. 
as Jesus is free from every spirit of poverty. So I am. So you are. In this world. As Jesus is free from every children's problem. So I am. So you are. In this world. Personalize it. Let it become your own statement. As he is, so I am. As he is, so you are. Believe it. The Bible makes it clear that we are members of Jesus' body. We are members of his flesh. We are members of his bone. This means as Jesus is healthy in his flesh. As Jesus is healthy in his bones. So I am. So are you in this world. And that means you and I begin to possess our possessions beginning now. Amen. See Jesus as he is. Because that's how I am. That's how we are. Let's all stand to our feet. As Jesus is. So we are. As he is healthy. In his brain. As he is healthy in his heart, in his feet, in his liver, in his kidney, as he is, so we are. Open your mouth and begin to declare any, any area that you want to remind yourself. That's how you are. As Jesus is free from every addiction, so are my children and my grandchildren. As Jesus is free from every form of drug, alcohol, so are my children, my grandchildren, all our young people in this church. So are we free from every addiction of every type. As Jesus is free from every weed and every dope, so are our children free from them all. As Jesus is free from every violence, so are our children free from every violence. In the name of Jesus, as Jesus is free from every weapon thrown against him because he is above all things, so are our children and us. We are free from every weapon that the enemy will try to throw against us. In the name of Jesus, as Jesus is free from every calamity of the enemy, from every arrow that may be thrown against him, he is free from them all. So are we and our family, our children, our grandchildren, our parents, our cousins, our aunties, our uncles. So are we free from them all in the name of Jesus. This is our reality. We believe that we receive. We believe that we receive. We are not moved by the things that we feel for our feelings are not our barometers. The truth of your word, my God, we rely on. As Jesus is, so are we. We believe by faith. You say that we should walk by faith and not by sight. We should walk by faith and not by the things that we feel, not the things that we see. So we believe you. We believe your word. As Jesus is, so are we. We say it's granted. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. 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 How many of you have received from the Lord? Amen. I pray for right now. Anyone that is going through any challenges, it's already done because you opened your mouth to say, as Jesus is, so are you. Jesus has no health issues. And so 
we have no health issues. Why? By faith, as Jesus is, so am I. Say that with me. As Jesus is, as Jesus is, with no health issues, so am I. Right here in this world. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. Every head bow and every eyes closed. No one moving around. If you are here, you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I would like to pray with you because we've been talking about as Jesus is. So are we. For you to be able to partake of that inheritance, you have to receive him first into your life. Very simple prayer. He says, come as you are. I want us to pray this prayer at church. Anyone that has prayed that prayer in the past, let's all together join our faith and pray with others. Repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, I believe Jesus died for me. I believe he rose again that I may have eternal life. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. And my Savior, forgive me of my sin. Fill me with your spirit. In your name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I would love you to please write me. And if you are in the church today, I want you to wait after service and let me know that you pray that prayer for the first time. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord remain gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace now even forevermore. Shalom, everyone. OCN, Word of God to the World.